Tales of Rise was the latest entry in the long-running series of games released last year, with its action combat and anime-inspired story and cutscenes. For fans of the game hoping to see a sequel following the events of Alfin, well, apparently, the developer has no plans to bring about a follow-up. In a recent interview with Edge magazine producer Yuzuki Tomizawa, shared that while the game had great success with shipping over 1.5 million copies in the first month alone and becoming the fastest selling title in the series, a sequel was not in the works. Tomizawa explained that the Arise was meant to be a standalone title that would leave a good aftertaste and result in not needing an expansion or follow-up. A cutting-edge flagship title was needed to be built upon while staying true to the roots of the series, and bolstering the success garnered from the Arise title. Both Tales of Arise and Scarlet Nexus had a crossover recently. Both received weapons and cosmetics from each other's games in free updates. Amazon and Smargate recently announced a roadmap of content for Lost Ark for the next upcoming months. This includes new advanced classes, the Glavia, which is a Lance Master type class coming in April, and an advanced class for Warrior called the Destroyer coming in May. A new continent called Southfern will be available next month, adding quite a substantial area and a new chapter that will continue the storyline after the events of Yawn and Panica. April will also bring further quality of life improvements such as secret maps, receiving an update to better streamline the process for getting loot. May will bring new trial guardian raids, getting players to take down three guardians at a time. Each week will rotate the set of foes players will need to best. There was also a peek into tentative content coming as soon as May, which includes a new Guardian raid and first ever Legion raid. Guardian Deska Luda will require players to have an eye level of 1415. Legion raids will introduce an 8 player raid and will require players to be at an item level of 1415. More information will follow in May. If you're currently making your way through Arkesia, be sure to check out our latest guides, including what to do after you hit level 50, and our Guardian raid guides as well. For everything else, visit our Lost Art Wiki. Developer Pathia Games has announced that the new entry to the My Time series called My Time at Sandrock will be heading into Early Access on May 26th via Steam and GOG. My Time, the cozy sim RPG, is back with a new entry called My Time at Sandrock. Heading into Early Access first for PC, the title will have the familiar favourites from the first title, My Time at Portier, but also some new features and improvements as well as an updated action RPG combat system. Set in the struggling city of Sandrock, which is currently in both economic and environmental ruin, players will play as a builder ready to breathe life back into the region. The action RPG combat system has been overhauled in Sandrock with melee and third-person shooting mechanics. As you explore the caverns and long-forgotten ruins of the area, you will need to fight back against hostile inhabitants. There are an array of weapons to master too. My Time at Sandrock will be available on PC via Steam Early Access and Epic Game Store on May 26, 2022 for $24.99 USD. Bandai Namco Elden Ring's publisher has plans to collaborate with the well-known fantasy and science fiction author Brandon Sanderson. He is particularly known for writing Mistborn and the continuation of the Wheel of Time series. This collaboration is even more likely as Bandai Namco recently sent Sanderson a huge box of Elden Ring memorabilia. From software, the Elden Ring developer has worked with a fantasy author by the name of George R. R. Martin, I think you might have heard of him. The collaboration was to create backstories and the basis of the lore of the highly acclaimed open world game. Publisher Bandai Namco is hoping to work with more talents in future projects because of this successful collaboration. One notable name is the famed author Brandon Sanderson. In his most recent livestream, Sanderson was handed an Elden Ring box with a note from Bandai. While he didn't read exactly what the note said, he shared there, meaning Bandai Namco, interested in perhaps doing something together. Sanderson then goes on to confirm that he already has ideas for writing Soulsborne stories. It's not the first time Sanderson has collaborated with other creators. Sanderson has already collaborated with Wizards of the Coast. He wrote a novella called Magic Children of the Nameless for the trading card game Magic the Gathering. What do you think of this potential team up? Let us know in the comments below. As with all news in this video, a link is in the description. Upcoming title Haunted Chocolatier, a follow-up to the game Stardew Valley by developer Concerned Ape, got new details in a recent livestream interview, including boss battles. Developer Eric Barone, aka Concerned Ape behind Stardew Valley, has been sharing a few details about the upcoming project, Haunted Chocolatier. While the game does seem to hold some similarities between the two, Haunted Chocolatier will have more of a focus on combat than Stardew Valley. Barone shared in a recent interview with PC Gamer that Haunted Chocolatier will have boss battles and will also have a darker feel, especially when it comes to the soundtrack. 
Instead of living on a farm, players will be living in a haunted castle where they will take on the role of a chocolatier, gathering rare ingredients to make delicious treats. But of course, there is more to the game than just being a connoisseur of chocolate, as the game sets to be more of an action RPG. It looks like we'll be getting some of the same features in Haunted Chocolatier as Stardew Valley, adding what people loved about the game. However, with more of a focus on combat, it means further challenges in this upcoming title with a brand new setting. Currently, there is no release date announced for Haunted Chocolatier. It's not too long now until Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song will be releasing. It will be releasing next month on May 19th. A new trailer has been released featuring pre-orders for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC via the Epic Games Store, with Switch releasing at a later date. In case you missed it, Swan Song is the RPG based on the world of Darkness role-playing universe. The game is being developed by the council developer Big Bad Wolf. Players will be able to explore the underbelly of the vampire world based in Boston. Taking on the role of three different vampires, Galeb, Glacier, and Emma, each has their own tale and possesses unique powers but have intertwined destinies. Details have been released for pre-order editions including bonuses such as the alternate outfits pack and the vampire the masquerade's coteries of New York for digital console pre-orders. The Primogen edition will also come with the Victoria Ash DLC. Demio, a tabletop turn-based RPG, has entered Early Access this week. The game originally released last year as a VR title, but now has a non-VR version for PC. Demio PC Edition is a co-op dungeon crawler that features up to four players gathered around a tabletop. They delve deeper into an increasingly difficult dungeon to defeat the undead and other evils that lurk within. The PC Edition is focused on creating an experience that non-VR users can enjoy seamlessly. The lands of the fifth earth are forever changing, originally Demio featured only one campaign, the ancient elven necropolis. Since its original release in 2021, the game has had three new adventures offered to players, all free of charge. Now they will have access to campaigns such as the Black Sarcophagus, the Realm of the Rat King and Roots of Evil, many more new quests are in the making as well. Each player can take up to five available classes that have its own distinct specialities and the ways that they will approach combat encounters. Players can also obtain powerful cards in either chests or from looting at their slain foes. These cards will represent items, spells and other abilities that each class can perform. More game modes, characters, stories and other quests are available in the works for the future. The team also seems to be very responsive and active in the community. Fans of the Korean MMO genre will have another great option to choose for this April. Black Desert is free for all players who do not already own it on Steam until April 13th. Usually Black Desert would cost $9.99 USD for NA and EU regions, but can be picked up for free for a limited time only. Players will also have access to a total of 24 character classes as of the Eternal Winter expansion. These classes can evolve into advanced forms later on. While you have the usual warriors, rangers, and sorceresses, Black Desert also has more unique offerings. Aside from the new Dracania class, the Eternal Winter expansion brings a new region, the Mountain of Eternal Winter, which is a dangerous and dreary place that is constantly under snowstorms. Players will need to watch out for a new frostbite mechanic that will drain HP in chilly places. Well, that's it for the week in the wikis. Please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits. And budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids, and general wiki goodness.